Hello guys, welcome back to the series of tutorials on C++. I am Deepak Kunyal and in previous tutorial we discussed about constructors and destructors and the way or order they are called during inheritance. Alright, now I will take an example and that example will uh, basically try to clear all your concepts related to inheritance. Alright, so let's make a constructor first and that constructor name will be parent and you can write uh, some message here maybe you can write base class and then you can implement same thing in the child class also you have to write here child class and here you have to write drive class all right so let's try to run this program first g plus plus and then name of this program access inherited values it has compiled successfully and now see the output base class and derived class and this is the desired result right till now you have seen that we did not discuss anything about the variables or uh, we did not try to access any variable or use that variable in some way so let's take few variables here i am taking variable x and then create a function which print this variable variable in base class is and then write x here and after that endl to go to the next line clear we don't have any print function in child class right but you can still print that value which is here or you can still access this value in some way so let's uh, call the print function right and see what is the value of this x variable compile this program now run this program and you can see variable in base classes this value this is some garbage value so we need to assign some value to this you can do it in this way int x and then you can write this arrow operator x equal to x so this is actually going to assign some value to this but for that you need to call constructor of this and there is a problem in this program till now let's compile this first and you will know the problem constructor for child class must explicitly initialize the base class parent right so we studied this thing in previous class that default constructor can be called automatically but when we are talking about constructor of parameterized type they cannot be called automatically so what you have to do at this place whenever there is a child class constructor you have to write constructor of parent in this way and if you want to pass some value here you have to pass it like this from this place but for that you should accept that value here right or maybe if you want to uh, pass it from here maybe 5 from here you can do that just try to run this program and now see variable in base class is 5 but this is very hard coded we don't want it to be here right so what we are going to do we are basically going to pass some value from here maybe make it 10 then we should be able to accept this variable somewhere here or you can make it j and when this j accept this value 10 it should pass this value to the parent and in this way you can call constructor or you can say parameterized constructor of base class right so let me run this program again and here you can see variable in base class is 10 clear although this is not a variable of base class you can see it in this way i will make constructor of base class first parent p and then you can pass 20 here to understand this program more clearly 
so I have created an object of parent class so let me show you this thing using some visualization so whenever you have a parent class so you can consider it a box like this and you have declared a variable inside that so it can be understood like this x equal to 20 and after that when you are creating an object of child class you can consider it like this child and then value of x equal to 10 inside this so these two values are actually very really different right so x equal to 20 will be inside parent and x equal to 10 will be inside child so this is going inside this program right we have parent 20 and child 10 clear so let me compile this program first and run it now you can see base class constructor is being called then it is saying variable in base class is 20 which is completely fine then we are saying base class derived class which is call for this right and after that variable in base class is 10 so actually the problem is this is not variable in base class clear this is variable in derived class at this point it's fine that it's in base class but this is not base class this is derived class variable so what what we can do we can do one thing if you want to overwrite something or if you want to make some changes to that uh, function you can implement that function in child class also so let me do it like this variable in base class you can make it variable in derived classes and then x is not going to work here you know why because this is private variable and you cannot access it outside class you have already studied this thing right so let me compile the program and you will see the error x is a private member so now to access this variable you have to create some method here which could be get x and then this function is going to return x from here clear so what you have to do outside you have to write get x and this is going to return the value of x now compile the program again and you can see this is compiled successfully now it is saying base class variable in base class is 20 and then derived class and variable in derived class is 10 which is completely fine now and you can see we have implemented this function again in the derived class and this thing is called function overriding right so what this thing is called function overriding you can write it here clear so using function writing you can implement the function that are in base class in the derived class in some another form clear so now what you have to do you have to tell me the difference between function overloading and function overriding clear so i will be waiting for your answer in the comment section and we'll meet you in the next video with some new concept till then thank you so much